Okay, this way I can sort of sit down while we're talking, right? Anyway. <laughs> Okay, maybe. We're trying to make a video. We're trying to make a video. Yes. He, uh, he's in the, don't show off the good part now. Anyway, he, uh, he likes to wallow in the mud. And so, when he gets in the mud, it cools him off. He's normally snow white. You need to get him all brushed out and cleaned up. And red clay, right, in the south. Yeah. Yeah. Can you say hi? Oh! Can we say hi? Can we say hi? Oh, big baby. I don't even know if you're getting one there or not. I thought I would try and tell you. <laughs> I thought I'd try and tell you uh, a little bit of things on my mind. Not a whole lot. Uh, man, you're dirty. You are dirty. You are. Big old galoot. Oh, I know it. Oh, I know. Here we're. <laughs> Got that wolf spirit about him, likes to run and attack. Okay, man, definitely muddy. You need a bath. Okay, so a lot of the question I'm getting <laughs> is when are these things going to start taking place? And a lot of uh, the responses. Uh, have been uh, concerning the Nibiru and the Elenin, things along that line. Most of the stuff that is sort of beyond our reach, you know, we're not really there. We're not really controlling <clears throat> those concepts. There's people still looking into the harp and the scalar and the concepts of war and stuff like that. But uh, we wanted to touch on the prophetic aspects uh, concerning uh, some of these planetary things and the stars and some of the alignments those are things you need to pay attention to you know me I just like to give you little tidbits of information for you to go look for yourself because that way you don't have to take my word for it uh, yeah I have an orange dog Isn't that crazy okay so uh, if we look and I favorited some things concerning this like I said the NASA spokesperson come out with NASA and uh, had been talking with Inside the Realms, the preparation concepts for possibilities of, of different disaster concepts. And to be ready, uh, does that mean you need a bug out bag? You know, I would have a bug out bag just to have one, just to be safe. Uh, if you did have to leave or evacuate your area for whatever reason, and I would load that out, you know, with the stuff that you're. Uh, priority kind of things, you know, normal survival gear. Which brings me to a story I wanted to mention. You know, I told you I had some stuff on my mind. And it looks like it's going to rain. Remember I started out sunny? Every time it starts sunny, it looks like clouds gather up quickly. Uh, maybe we just need some thunder and lightning again. I don't know. Okay, I'm rambling. And I told you I was going to share with you a story. I don't even know what kind of time we're looking at. But, but seriously, I would be uh, focused. And again, like I said, I'm, I'm looking at a specific to give you some breaking uh, information, but uh, getting everybody together on the same page, I just uh, really didn't have a whole lot to say today. Uh, just thought that I would uh, come out there. You need to howl. Well, you already hear him howl. He gets going, boy. He's just yeah, crazy. Okay, I got away from the dog so I could finish talking a little bit. He was a distraction, I think, in some ways. But, you know, looking at him and seeing how muddy he is, and how dirty, uh, there's not a human being walking on the planet that isn't in that same condition in one form or another. Oh, yeah, we can be made white, get the right bath, I guess. But we're all covered in the filth. There was a guy by the name of Lot used to live back in the uh, city of Sodom and when you start looking into that there was actually five cities uh, metropolitan areas it's interesting remember history repeats itself but anyway back in uh, Sodom and Gomorrah and the other cities that were named there this guy by the name of Lot he was uh, 
pretty good guy, you know. I mean, he had his connection with God and Tim and his wife and his two daughters. And they were living in this metropolitan city, if you will. And make a long story short, because you can go look this up and read this story yourself. And most of you already know it. But anyway, Lot, he, uh, something was happening to him. He was getting sort of like the dog. And what I mean by that is, well, he was getting dirty just by being around it. You see, if I take and uh, put that old uh, animal in mind, uh, clean him up real good, get him all pure white, uh, take him in with me or something like that, well, he'll be spotless. He'll stay that way as long as he's in the right environment. But as soon as you let him run free and get out there in the dirt and the mud, you know, with this heat and stuff, boy, he's going to roll in that mud. It cools him off a little bit. But it makes him filthy at the same time just by the environment he's in. And it's a lot of what's happening to us as human beings. We are being vexed like the guy Lot I was telling you about. Uh, he was losing his connection with God a little bit just for the simple fact that uh, he was seeing so much trash around him, and I don't mean just garbage and dirt, but I'm talking about literally the, the ways of life that people are in. I'll give you another example here so that you can maybe uh, comprehend exactly what I'm trying to say. You take some of these people that have been indoctrinated by television, and all they know is television, 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 television. And they get in there on that television, and, well, that's the end of it for them, you know, because then they live it, they sleep it, they believe it, they trust it, they don't live without it. And they become indoctrinated. They become what we would refer to as being vexed. It's a vexation of the spirit. Um, there used to be an old saying, you know, you are what you associate with. I'll give you another example. They used to say these winos or something, you know, would be out in the alley. And, well, if you hang out with them all the time and that's where you come to live or reside in the alleys because maybe you're homeless or, or something has happened that puts you on the street or whatnot, and you hang around with them, eventually one of them's going to pass you one of those paper bags and you're going to eventually take a drink because you're going to be thirsty. And that's a start. And so that's how it works. It doesn't hit you all at once. Uh, and the problem is, is this internet, this YouTube, has been sort of in that same catalyst. I'll give another example. Um, how many people do you know that profess to know God and they'll spend their evenings in, in the porno stuff, you know, watching porn and, and, and the garbage and things like that, stuff that will dirty them up, fill their mind a little bit um, because they don't think they have any other way or because it's there and because it's free, it's easy access, stuff like that. Um, same with drugs, same with uh, just about anything, even the money uh, concept. Why is everybody worrying, worrying about their bills and worrying about this and worrying about that? And why? Because you've been programmed by our society to uh, think that money is more than it is. And there's a time coming where they're going to cast their gold in the streets. Uh, go over and read about that one. Uh, Zechariah will help you on that, I believe. Or Zephaniah, Zechariah. I keep naming those two. I don't know if anybody's reading them or not. I would hope that y'all are going back and covering over all this because there's so many keys. And I've been getting some really good information. I don't want to say information as much as uh, comments and messages. I'll put it that way. The private messages where people have really got their eyes and ears open. And that's awesome that they're paying attention to certain aspects and picking up on the, the little clues, I guess, or tidbits. But seriously, have you been vexed? Are you like my dog? Just because you've wallowed in it, you've become muddy, turned orange maybe, or dirty? Well, you can get a bath now. Remember, we've already talked about that in the previous one too. And I'm going to tell you folks, you know, I mentioned that September could be uh, something serious to be watching. And listen, that's not to create fear or anything like that. I'm just telling you from a political scale. You know, look at what the politicians are saying and, and some of these world leaders. I mean, they're all saying the same thing. If we were to default on the dollar in August and the economy starts collapsing, everybody starts going nuts, you know, it wouldn't take but a, a, a week or two before our uh, wonderful good old USA just sort of goes under. And in the midst of all of that turmoil and everything else, then say somebody in some foreign country decides to flip a switch and then that's pretty much the go ahead and, and we're done. Hope you're picking up on all this and putting it all together, but if you're not, then uh, keep looking, keep studying, you'll pick it up. But seriously, get out of the mud, 
get out of the muck and the filth. Turn that stuff away, man. Turn that stuff off. I'm telling you, get cleaned up. You need to be white like the dog's supposed to be. Got it? Hope you're picking up on that, y'all. Put it together, man. Go take a bath. I need to. I've been wallowing with a dog. It's muddy and dirty and shedding. Yeah. Y'all keep me in your prayers. I'm praying for you, and uh, we'll see how this, uh, this one turns out. I don't know if I've given you a whole lot, probably a lot more than you think I have, but that'll be up to you to decide. And uh, again, here's the big kick right here at the end, okay? You ready for this? Not one of us at all are guaranteed our next breath or our next heartbeat. If you're a human being with a, an IQ of one, you know that. You know that's a fact of reality. Nobody's guaranteed. You don't know when your time clock is punched. It's your time. You're going to go regardless of what you think. You can be standing on a clear day in the middle of the house and the lightning will still get to you if it needs to. You just don't know. And it's because we don't have that guarantee of the breath that we shouldn't take a chance and walk foolishly back to the muck and the mire. I hope you're paying attention. I really do. Because the things I'm trying to tell you is not to scare you by any means. It's to prepare you. Get ready. Even people that, that have insurance policies or, or and, and I'm talking about people like when they're preparing for their where they're going to rest. Uh, if you've got a family, you've probably already made arrangements with a funeral home and, and maybe even with the cemetery or where you're going to have your family plots or a mausoleum or wherever it is you plan to have your body interred or, or if you're going to do the cremation, you've already maybe picked out an urn to have your body rest in and, and all of this and that, you know, dust to the dust and, and that stuff. But many people make those plans early of what they're going to do with their remains. The problem is, is you can't put your soul, your spirit. You see, you are a spiritual creature in a physical manifestation at the moment. You're sort of trapped in your body, if you will. Again, tidbits and clues, y'all. But you got to make preparation for that after, you know? Not just the body. No, it's good to go pick out a place if you think that's where you're going to be buried. There's coming a time where they're going to be uh, mass burials, most likely. It's happening all over the world right now, but there's probably a time coming here soon before long, and it'll be here too. Hey, but no fear. Really, no fear. Just prepare. Get ready. Make sure you're right with the Creator. If you don't think He exists, you've been in too much of the mud my dog's been rolling in. Go get a bath. Cleaned up. Told you how, last couple videos back, right? You know what to do. Okay, for the most part, this is for those that have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. Get ready. Seriously. Start getting ready now. No more games.